Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing unto God, your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be reformed in the newness of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Words taken from the 12th chapter of the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. All this week, during the octave of Epiphany, we have heard these words from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12, the beginning of which we just repeated. I highly recommend this chapter to married couples and families. It is one of those places to look in sacred scripture to learn from heaven how to live your lives together. It is a chapter that ought to be meditated upon and used to order our lives well. And thus, we should even memorize various, various passages. Now, in the passage we just heard, we're commanded not to conform ourselves to this world, but rather to conform to God, even to Christ crucified. Thus we heard, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing unto God, your reasonable service. This is our Lord. This is him crucified. Thus, right before the consecration, you even hear those words, a reasonable sacrifice, service. As we get close to the representation of of our Lord on the cross in the mass at the consecration. The importance of this conformity cannot be understated or underestimated. It is vital to our spiritual growth and ultimately our salvation to conform to Christ and not to the world, the flesh, and the devil. Flip it over. It's vital for the devil that we do conform and thus he can capture us and enslave us. Here are a couple of reasons. First, due to the nature of our souls, we're made to receive forms. Our wills are like silly putty of old we used to play with, where it retains the shape of what it comes into contact with or retains the print of the newspaper when you push it against it, you pull it up and there it is. If the forms our souls come into contact with are of the world and the flesh that is not of God, then we will indeed become more and more worldly and sensual. We will not easily be able to resist our fallen nature's inclinations to indulgence. And when indulgence is given into, sin is there. So first reason, due to the nature of our souls, we have to resist conforming to the wrong things. Second reason, due to the nature of demons, they use the points of these conformity to tempt and influence us. By way of these points of contact, of conformity, they help mold us to embrace more and more perversions, making them the norm of our existence. Thus, in the gospel, our Lord spoke of how this woman was bent over for so many years under the influence of the devil. You know, her physical bending over was symbolic of someone under the sway of the diabolic. This, in turn, makes our souls more compatible and simpatico, friendly, with the devil. Some have called this molding of hearts and minds psychological compatibility, a soul molding, psych, soul, psychological compatibility. We befriend and walk with devils. 
they then use us and can even enter into us, making possessions come about. It's one of the jobs of an exorcist is to break this psychological compatibility so that the devil can be cast out more readily. Now, how do they accomplish this? How do the devils bring about this psychological compatibility? Well, we watch the world's productions, the devil's productions, basically almost everything that comes out of Hollywood. We listen to their music. We see and read their filth. It becomes normal. We see it in stores, billboards, over the radio. It's all around us. As a result, we are soon thinking, walking, and talking like them. A lot of psychological compatibility in our world today is possible. It's happening all around us. Thus, St. Paul is admonishing us. Be not conformed to this world, but be reformed, refashioned, remolded in the newness of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Now, how can we do this best? Well, St. John of the Cross just says, turn off all the inputs, turn off all the senses. You turn them all off, that stuff can't get in, can it? Well, that's not easy to do, but that's what really every religious is supposed to do. Every convent has all the channels turned off. When you walk in, you're in the dark night of the senses right away. And it can be disturbing at first until it calms down. Well, we do what we heard Blessed Mary and St. Joseph do this past week in the gospel. When we realize that his majesty is no longer in our company because we're conformed to the world instead, we turn around and we retrace our steps to find him anew. The gospel is clear. We can indeed go back and we have to the way we came. It needs to be done to find his majesty, Jesus Christ. We have to turn back. Oh, we hear, you can't go back. Oh, yes, we can. And it's right in the gospel. We need to. When you find our Lord's not present, and he's not. Anytime there's conformity to the world, he's not there. He's in the temple, the sacred place, the vertical place. He is filling the minds and the hearts of the men there with holy and good thoughts. There in the temple, his majesty gives us all that is needed to straighten out, to prove what is the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God. We can do this, too, by turning away from the worldly sensory inputs, as St. John of the Cross said, by fasting and prayer. That's why fasting and prayer cast out demons, Because it's breaking conformity to the world and they have no more points of contact. By looking at holy images and wholesome sights, things of God's creation rather than the perversions offered on the internet and man's, modern man's art and all his works. We can listen to ordered music Gregorian chants, choral, good classical works instead of the modern syncopated music that damages the soul. In fact, once again, the exorcists have found listening to Gregorian chant works. Get the devil out. We listen to good sermons and conferences. We say no to ourselves at the table. We don't sleep and eat and drink all we want. We read sound books and use ordered speech. Then the soul, more and more conformed to Christ, is prepared for graces to heal and ultimately enable it to enter into the transforming union offered to the souls that draw close to God. And heard today in the lesson, St. Paul speak to St. Timothy thus, We will be then ready to be sacrificed. 
having fought a good fight, having finished our course, having kept the faith. May we all be saved souls together in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.